Great, I muttered. That's two major gods who want to kill me. But a quest, too, Grover swallowed. I mean, couldn't the Master Bolt be in some place like Maine? Maine's very nice this time of year. Hades sent a minion to steal the Master Bolt, Chiron insisted. He hid it in the underworld, knowing full well that Zeus would blame Poseidon. I don't pretend to understand the Lord of the Dead's motives perfectly, or why he chose this time to start a war. But one thing is certain. Percy must go to the underworld, find the Master Bolt, and reveal the truth. A strange fire burned in my stomach. The weirdest thing was it wasn't fear. It was anticipation. The desire for revenge. Hades had tried to kill me three times so far, with the Fury, the Minotaur, and the Hellhound. It was his fault my mother had disappeared in a flash of light. Now he was trying to frame me and my dad for a theft we hadn't committed. I was ready to take him on. Besides, if my mother was in the underworld... Whoa, boy, said the small part of my brain that was still sane. You're a kid. Hades is a god. Grover was trembling. He'd started eating pinochle cards like potato chips. The poor guy needed a complete quest with me so he could get his searcher's license, whatever that was. But how could I ask him to do this quest, especially when the oracle said I was destined to fail? This was suicide. Look, if he knows it's Hades, I told Chiron, why can't we just tell the other gods? Zeus or Poseidon could go down to the underworld and bust some heads. Suspecting and knowing are not the same, Chiron said. Besides, even if the other gods suspect Hades, and I imagine Poseidon does, they couldn't retrieve the bolt themselves. Gods cannot cross each other's territories except by invitation. That is another ancient rule. Heroes, on the other hand, have certain privileges. They can go anywhere, challenge anyone, as long as they're bold enough and strong enough to do it. No god can be held responsible for a hero's action. Why do you think the gods always operate through humans? You're saying I'm being used. I'm saying it's no accident Poseidon has claimed you now. It's a very risky gamble, but he's in a desperate situation. He needs you. My dad needs me. Emotions rolled around inside me like bits of glass in a kaleidoscope. I didn't know whether to feel resentful or grateful or happy or angry. Poseidon had ignored me for 12 years. Now suddenly he needed me. I looked at Chiron. You've known I was Poseidon's son all along, haven't you? I had my suspicions. As I said, I've spoken to the Oracle too. I got the feeling there was a lot he wasn't telling me about his prophecy. But I decided I couldn't worry about that right now. After all, I was holding back information too. So, let me get this straight, I said. I'm supposed to go to the underworld and confront the Lord of the Dead. Check, Chiron said. Find the most powerful weapon in the universe. Check. And get it back to Olympus before the summer solstice in ten days. That's about right. I looked at Grover, who gulped down the Ace of Hearts. Did I mention that Maine is very nice this time of year? He asked weakly. You don't have to go, I told him. I can't ask that of you. Oh, he shifted his hooves. No, it's just that satyrs and, uh, and underground places, well... He took a deep breath, then stood, brushing the shedded cards and aluminum bits off his t-shirt. You saved my life, Percy. If you're serious about wanting me along, I won't let you down. I felt so relieved, I wanted to cry, though I didn't think that would be very heroic. 
Grover was the only friend I'd ever had for longer than a few months. I wasn't sure what good a satyr could do against the forces of the dead, but I felt better knowing he'd be with me. All the way, G-Man. I turned to Chiron. So where do we go? The Oracle just said to go west. The entrance to the underworld is always in the west. It moves from age to age, just like Olympus. Right now, of course, it's in America. Where? Chiron looks surprised. I thought that would be obvious enough. The entrance to the underworld is in Los Angeles. Oh, I said. Naturally, so we get on a plane. No, Grover shrieked. Percy, what are you thinking? Have you ever been on a plane in your life? I shook my head, feeling embarrassed. My mom had never taken me anywhere on a plane. She'd always said we didn't have the money. Besides, her parents had died in a plane crash. Percy, think, Chiron said. You are the son of the sea god. Your father's bitterest rival is Zeus, lord of the sky. Your mother knew better than to trust you in an airplane. You would be in Zeus's domain. You would never come down alive. Overhead, lightning crackled. Thunder boomed. Okay, I said, determined not to look at the storm. So I'll travel over land. That's right, Chiron said. Two companions may accompany you. Grover is one. The other has already volunteered, if you will accept her help. Gee, I said, feigning surprise. Who else would be stupid enough to volunteer for a quest like this? The air shimmered behind Chiron. Annabeth became visible, stuffing her Yankees cap into her back pocket. I've been waiting a long time for a quest, seaweed brain, she said. Athena is no fan of Poseidon, but if you're going to save the world, I'm the best person to keep you from messing up. If you do say so yourself, I said. I suppose you have a plan, wise girl. Her cheeks colored. Do you want my help or not? The truth was I did. I needed all the help I could get. A trio, I said. That'll work. Excellent, Chiron said. This afternoon, we can take you as far as the bus terminal in Manhattan. After that, you are on your own. Lightning flashed. Rain poured down on the meadows that were never supposed to have violent weather. No time to waste, Chiron said. I think you should all get packing. And we'll get busy on Chapter 10 next time. Till then, as Tigger says, ta-ta for now. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying this story. Bye-bye.